Thank you for joining me back at Bexhill West. I'm James. Now I'm aware it's been quite some time since we've had something pretty to look at being made on the channel and so I thought that when we got through today's subject, which is sort of mechanical design and maybe a little bit dry, I thought I'd put together a little sort of musical montage of me painting something pretty. So I've made a little crane based on a, a photograph that I saw that appealed to me. Anyway, in putting this video together it's clear that the video is far too long and if I include the footage of this little crane then well we're going to need a comfort break halfway through. So I'm going to hold over the footage for this until next time. Hopefully we'll get a video out on this on Friday of next week. But for the meantime today's topic is turnout control or point motors for Bexhill West. I hope you enjoy it. Now one of the things I keep getting asked is when are we going to see some progress on the actual model of Bexhill West and for some it seems they think I've lost interest. That really isn't the case um, and it, I've been held up by the change in gauge to P4. Now anybody who's worked with P4 will know that everything takes just considerably longer. Now I've made loads and loads of the track which in itself is a really time consuming and occasionally mind numbing process. But it's all ready to lay but there's just one more thing that I need to kind of figure out before I could get on with it and that concerns this. Now you may recall a few months ago I made my first turnout or point in P4 gauge and I've made several more of them. I've made almost all of them now. Um, but there's a, a problem with this, or not a problem, but there's a, a design consideration that I, I really need to figure out, and that's really the purpose of today's video. So if we compare this with a piece of double O gauge track work, you could see there's a few obvious differences. That most notably, we've got a sort of a more realistic um, length and crossing angle here on the P4 one as opposed to the double O. But the real difference is down here in this tie bar area. So I'll zoom in and we'll have a look at that a little bit closer. Okay, so in the double O gauge, this is a piece of Pico track, you can see we've got this tie bar arrangement here with a familiar little bit that switches it across. And what amounts to, I think, a sort of fairly crude representation of a locking mechanism. But anyway, that's fairly familiar and of course in the center there is a little hole which can operate uh, or can take a pin which could be connected to some form of mechanism to operate the switches okay so that's i think everybody's familiar with that with p4 it's up to one to come up with whatever system of tie bars and switching apparatus that they want to you know depends on what degree of um finesse or fidelity to the prototype I guess that you want to observe. Now sometimes it could be a piece of uh, copper clad like printed circuit board soldered across as a kind of tie bar um, and we could use that as a, a switching thing. Now I really don't want to use that because it looks a little bit unrealistic. I want to have realistic tie bars and I want the operating mechanism to be um, somewhat hidden out of sight. So really today's video is about how I intend to overcome that. Now for reasons that I won't go into in this video, perhaps we'll look at it when I've got this all set up because it'll make more sense. But for, for this reason which I'll kind of gloss over for now, I want to avoid the idea of a central pin running through a tie bar like so. I will have two vertical pins, one operating on each of the blades. And as I say, I'll explain why in another episode. So what am I going to use to sort of create this motion? Well, the obvious choice is a servo motor. So I'll show you how I intend to do it. But before I do, it's worth recapping sort of how servo motors are used generally, because I think that will set the context for how I've approached this as a design problem. Now, then using servo motors to operate these things is almost standard practice now. These things are dirt cheap, they contain a little gearbox in and feedback electronics and can be driven to a very precise angular position with the control electronics. Now, there are systems that one can buy to control that and I will demonstrate one of those in a little while. Um, however, I intend to make my own, but the point is the same. 
when fitted with a suitable operating arm, this arm can be controlled very precisely. So let's look at how this sort of typically works in a normal setup. And again, I know I'm teaching people to suck eggs here. Most people know this, but I sort of want to explain why I'm approaching this slightly differently. So normally the servo motor would be mounted below the baseboard. It could be elsewhere, but let's imagine this below the baseboard. And for the purpose of this demonstration, my baseboard is running here. I was going to make a little model to demonstrate this, but I just ran out of time. Now, the, to the end of that output arm on the servo would typically be a piece of piano wire or something like that, some sort of linkage, which generally runs in a bit of a loose bearing somewhere along its length. So that as you move one end in one direction, the top end moves in the opposite direction. Let's imagine this pen is the tie bar of the turnout. So with the servo horn in one position, we can then rotate it. The operating linkage will move through an angle and that will slide our tie bar across. And so with this motion, we can move the tie bar, or in this case the pen, backwards and forwards. And we can use that handy little hole on the tie bar on the set of pico points, for example, as a fixing point to move that th with. So that's all fine, that makes good sense. However, to me, it's a little bit crude. Now, doubt undoubtedly it works well, um, but I don't like the idea that this end actually moves through an arc. Really we've got an oscillating motion here transferring onto what ought to be a reciprocating motion and I think it's just slightly not as elegant as it could be shall we say. So I've tried to come up with something a little bit different. Now this might be a really bad idea, I don't know. I'm going to show you and you'll let me know I'm sure in the, in the comments. But it's this idea of trying to remove what to me feels like a crude um, conversion of motion here into something that's maybe in an engineering sense a little bit more perfect. There's another reason why I want to develop my own system in that I've got all the signals to control as well and these all require very very precise linear movements in order that they're going to operate correctly through the right range of motion. And what I want is a system where I can mechanically set the amount of travel of the mechanism. So hopefully the idea I'm going to present for operating the turnouts, I will also be able to apply in a slightly modified format, but for operating the signals as well. So let's jump on the computer and I'll show you what I've come up with. So in my attempt to come up with something a little bit more elegant, uh, this is what I've come up with and in this case you can see we've got the servo laying on its side attached to which is a slip eccentric which operates this driving pin to which are two vertical pins now these will connect to the blades of the turnout and affect the sort of the sliding motion now if I click on the eccentric and just spin this round you can sort of see the sort of the full range of the travel and these pins are supported in this groove. Now additionally I have added on this little boss out the back here a little slot so I can put a, a zip tie around here to hold the servo in in which case the whole thing can be dropped straight out once this is fitted onto the baseboard. There should of course be a pin connecting these two pieces. I've, I've not drawn that yet. So let's take a little look then at the eccentric itself. And this really is the component that makes it all happen. So I carefully measured up the splines on the servo output shaft and designed this little eccentric piece. And the secret to this working is of course that the, the center point of this driving eccentric is mounted off center of the operating shaft of the servo. 
and in this case it's eccentric by two millimeters so if this were to be fitted to a servo and operated through a full 180 degrees of movement it would give four millimeters of travel however I intend to run just through 90 degrees and in which case this will give two millimeters of travel now the idea here if I come back to this view is that I can change the offset of this eccentric and control precisely or control mechanically the range of movement here so I think I need something like 1.5 1.6 millimeters of movement but I think I will set it at about two millimeters of movement just as I've got it set here um, and then use software to control the or dial in the the actual throw precisely okay so I'll show a little video clip of this operating and, and you'll see for yourself just how it works now this is the thing it's really quite simple I've set it operating here really fast and I've just set it to rotate in one direction just so that you can see that movement running all the time now I think this is quite a straightforward um, device quite elegant and if I can make it satisfactorily and get it to operate smoothly I think that should be quite a neat low profile point mechanism so then these are the parts of the system um, that's the the main block we've got our little eccentric ring there this is the eccentric itself and I don't know if you can make out that that's got the spines on the inside and these are all 3d printed now the operating bar I intended to be brass um, but I couldn't find any brass of the right diameter so in so in order to get this video together I've 3d printed an operating arm now, I wouldn't advise 3d printing something like this if you have a look you can see it's got a bit of a bend in it um, that's where I dropped it on the floor and then promptly trod on it and broke it um, and, and then jabbed the broken end <laughs> Into the end of my thumb so hence the continuity error with the uh, with the plaster um, so anyway in fact there's a bit of blood on the thing this is terrible so hopefully I'll get this done in one take before the gore all reappears um, so it all goes together I think quite straightforwardly the servo is a pretty nice fit in there I won't put the cable tie round just yet the operating pin assuming it still fits now I've glued it together goes in there there we go the you can see I've already got an eccentric fitted on here and held with a screw the eccentric ring on, doesn't fit what's going on here oh I've got the wrong one I'll go and get the right one that was a that was a previous attempt hang on a second sorry about that I've been experimenting with eccentrics with different degrees of throw or different amounts of throw I should say which require different eccentric sheaves and so I've, I've got them mixed up anyway let's pop the right one on and that's a it's a sliding fit it's a nice a nice fit um, and then this should go together and this was the bit I find tricky it's lining it all up there we go and then I've got a little brass pin here let's, let's pop that pin in oh. <laughs> oh dear me right let's fiddle that into that hole there we go nice so that's that's now in there so I'll connect this up to some electronics and we can see if it works now I've got this set up to a mega points servo controller and the servo is attached to channel number one so if I flick the switch for channel one hopefully you can see the movement on the servo
Now it's quite slight, you might not see it on the big screen, so if I change it to another view, hopefully you'll get a, a good view of what's going on. So let's, I've got another camera here, just off the main screen. So if I set this up, and then we can try again. Let's see if that will, whoops. So hopefully you can see that movement is quite smooth and to me that feels like quite an elegant solution. Now of course I could just use tried and tested methods, you know, there's nothing wrong with it what's already out there but those of you who watch the channel regularly will know that I often like to do my own thing and I certainly enjoy making things. So my intention with this will be ultimately not to use the Mega Points system. Not that there's anything wrong with it, I think it's pretty good actually. Um, but I'm going to write my own code and run this from an Arduino. And I'm going to use the same system as I've already mentioned for controlling the turnouts and the signals. And the control panel will interface via radio. So I can have a control box to, to operate everything. Um, they can be totally independent of the main model, so it could be positioned anywhere. So if the model is on display somewhere, you could kind of control it from any position. But we'll, we'll talk about that much further down the line. That'll probably be something for Season 3. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think of this idea. Now, when I approach stuff like this, I tend not to do the obvious thing of going online and looking to see how everyone else has done it. Uh, but after I came up with this, I did a quick internet search and I hadn't seen anything quite like it. Um, but I think it's, it seems to me to be a pretty neat idea. Now, I think it'll be much better when this piece has been replaced with brass. I have it in mind that I might make this in a slightly different way uh, with different materials but this as a basic proof of concept it seems to work a treat and of course all I need to do is change that eccentric and then I've mechanically set any sort of degree of travel I want on here and there's sufficient clearance between this and what would be the baseboard to you know you could have quite a large eccentric on here you could use the same thing to um, you know, in, in larger gauges, you know, O gauge, gauge one, I should think, would also be pretty good. Anyway, there you go. That's what I've come up with. Let me know what you think. So then, here we are again, back where we started. I really would be interested to hear your thoughts and comments, good or bad, about my little mechanism. Do please let me know in the comments. Um, and if you're interested in this little crane, then there will be a video featuring it hopefully at the end of next week and I hope you find that interesting. If that's something you'd like to see, consider subscribing and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.